Hey there, this is John from Intense Outdoor Gear, also Intense Angler here on YouTube. And what you're looking at right now is our super ultra lightweight cook kit. Now this has by far been one of the more popular items on the site since we started up, and for a pretty good reason. Um, I've actually carried this little kit long before we started the site, and I absolutely love this thing. It works perfectly for day hikes and things of that nature. Uh, where you typically typically would not carry a stove and pot, you know, um, yet you still may want a nice hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of cocoa, something like that. So it's just been a great little kit. And while we're not going to talk too much about this here today, what we are going to talk about is the driving force behind this little kit, and that is, of course, the X-Lite alcohol stove here. And we're actually going to be doing a kind of uh, how it's made, how-to video on this little stove today. And before we get into that too much, I just wanted to show you a little bit about it. What we have is just a little uh, double-walled designed aluminum stove here. And she's coming in at about 12 grams. And, you know, that's not the lightest in the world for a super ultra lightweight uh, stove, uh, especially of this nature. But what we did was use just a little bit heavier gauge aluminum than you would find on something like an aluminum can here. And so what we ended up with was just striking a kind of a nice balance between weight and durability, which uh, is, you know, always important to me. You don't want your equipment to fail on you. So anyway, it's got that going on for it. And, uh, you know, there's not much more to tell on that. But my favorite feature on the stove and why I wanted to show you guys this is, I don't know if you can pick these up here, but these little bumps on the stove, they're actually little heat risers. And there's three of them on here. Now, if you're familiar with alcohol stoves, you, you'll know immediately why those are on there. And what that is, is once your stove's all fired up, heated, and bloomed out, ready to go, and you take your nice cold pot of water on there to start boiling, what immediately happens is you get a transfer of cold to this little tiny stove here, and immediately cools it down and will either put out the flame or drastically reduce it. And so, what these little risers accomplish is they completely reduce the contact area on the top of the stove. So now instead of having this whole rim as a conduit for that uh, heat loss, what you have now is just these three really insignificant little contact points, thereby eliminating that heat transfer issue. You can simply set your stove immediately on the pot and keep your flame going just as strong as it was before. So great little addition there. One thing I did want to say uh, really quick, um, I did not come up with that concept and uh, to the best of my knowledge, and I may be wrong here, so please correct me if I am, uh, but to the best of my knowledge, Tinny from Mini Bowl Design had came up with a, a very similar thing that he does on a rolled edged stove made out of aluminum bottles and he pretty much just crimps down a few points uh, getting the same exact effect. So you know we kind of use that, that concept here. And on this little stove, there's of course no way to, to do that. And so what we did was found a way to integrate these little risers into the stove. And it's not very complicated. So as we proceed with the build here, you'll see how we do that. So anyway, uh, let's get going on this. The core items that you're going to need for this build are first an aluminum bottle. And you're just going to be using the neck portion off of that bottle there. Secondly, you're going to need a 2.25 ounce Barbasol shaving cream canister. Now, you can use a Gillette canister or a mini Axe can. They're virtually the same size. But the reason that we're using these Barbasol canisters are for the deeper indention on the bottom. They tend to work better with this design. And I'll show you why as we proceed here. And as you can see, I've got this canister all stripped of paint and ready to go. Now that you have your can stripped of paint, you're just going to take and mark around the perimeter of the can at the four centimeter mark here. So you're going to want this line. I'm just using two Jenga blocks here, but you know, whatever works. Next, you're just going to take a good old fashioned pair of tin snips here and cut around the four centimeter mark that you marked on your can. Now for the next step, you're going to take your aluminum bottle and simply remove the neck. I just used a hacksaw here and you're going to proceed to mark in two locations on the neck of this bottle. You're going to mark uh, right under where the bottle bends, right by the where the cap would go on, just right below that bend. 
and the second mark is going to be right below where the bend ends on this bigger portion. And once you have your marks on your bottleneck, go ahead and just cut those out the same way you did with your Barbasol can. Now that your cuts are made, you'll have both pieces which will form the interior and the exterior body of the stove here. Now before we can put these together, there's a little bit more work that we need to do. And we'll go ahead and start with the exterior here. Now before we can place our two pieces together, we're first going to want to take the outside body of the can and mark and drill our jets. And what I use for that is just a little template that I made to size and we'll just affix that with a piece of tape in the center. And then just go ahead and take a marker and mark the location of the jets. Pretty simple there. Now that we have our jets marked there near the bottom, we'll go ahead and mark the height of the jet placement here. And I'm just using my good old Jenga block once again. And what this gives us is a jet height from the bottom of two and a half centimeters. Go ahead and just uh, spin that can and mark the height of your jets. Now to transfer the jet placement from here to here, marking it, go ahead and just use a straight edge. And I'm of course using my good old uh, Jenga block once again. Just roll that down where your mark is flush with the uh, block and just simply mark it. Well, as you can see now, we have all of the jet locations marked on the stove. So what we're going to do is take just a good old piece of regular scotch tape and apply that over the uh, place where we're going to be drilling here. And what this uh, allows is, uh, what I found is just helps uh, when you're doing this by hand, it keeps your drill bit from walking around on you too much there. Okay, next using a 1 16th inch drill bit, go ahead and just proceed to drill your holes out. Now with the exterior of our stove complete, we can go ahead and just set that off to the side here. And I'll take a metal file, you can see what I got here, it's this old uh, kind of rusty one, it's been around for a while. And we'll just go ahead and lay that down the middle of the narrowest portion of the bottleneck here. And just go ahead and file down a couple notches, you don't need these too big here. And what that will do is of course allow fuel to drain from the uh, you know once you pour it in the stove it'll allow it to come up into the double walled section of the stove here the interior wall now once you're done with the filing and you have some ports for your fuel to drain through here what i like to do is just take a sanding block and just kind of sand around the upper third portion of the neck to remove the paint and the reason for that is um, so that you don't see the paint through the uh, jet holes. Now, of course, that's just for aesthetics. You can uh, skip this step if you want. Now that both of your pieces are finally prepped and ready to go, it's time to put them together. And for that, you're going to need some good old JB Weld. Now that you have your JB Weld mixed up there, just go ahead and take a little bit of it and put a little dab of it all the way around the very top interior portion of the stove here. And you're not going to want a lot of this on here. A little dab will do you as they say. Okay, now that the inside portion is coated with a little bit of JB Weld, it's time to do the install here. And uh, couldn't be much simpler. Just go ahead and place that in there. And you guys kind of know what's coming. The Jenga block here. Just go ahead and place that on top. And to tap this into place. You don't want to make sure that uh, she goes in there evenly. Okay, now that the uh, stove is firmly assembled, firmly pressed together, uh, the next step is going to be installing uh, our risers, and this is actually not too complicated here. Uh, go ahead and just take a permanent marker, a Sharpie is what I'm using, 
and mark out your three locations on the very top and uh, I have a little template but I can't seem to find it right now so right now we're just going to be eyeballing this but of course you're going to want them approximately the same uh, distance apart here so you can see that we've got them uh, marked up there and ready to go to the next step now the next step here is going to be cutting down a portion of the top lip of the stove uh, lower than the risers and what I'm using for that is just a well, this just happens to be a really cheap uh, rotary tool you know uh, Dremel is kind of synonymous with these but that's what I'm using and so we'll go ahead and off to each side I actually can't do this and film at the same time it's probably too loud but off to each side of the mark leaving about an eighth of an inch in there just go ahead and, and cut that down um, you know to your desired height of the riser and I don't have an exact measurement on that I just kind of eyeball it but um, anyway let we'll, we'll get to work on this and I'll show you what I'm talking about here Okay, now you can see what I got going on here. Um, we don't cut down too far into there. Like I said, I don't know the measurement exactly, but we've went ahead and done that on each side of what is going to be our riser. And uh, I don't think I mentioned it, but the bit I'm using for this is just, uh, it's kind of like a little metal file. I think it might be diamond coated, but anyway, it chews right through that. So uh, next step now that you have those, uh, the depth marked next to each, each riser, you're gonna wanna remove this middle portion. Now you can go ahead and use your uh, Dremel or rotary tool or you can go back to your metal file and go ahead and just trim that down to the depth of the uh, marking you know all the way and just get that material removed there leaving the riser. Now of course you can do this whole process with just a, uh, a file you don't need a, a rotary tool but uh, we'll get back to this and get this done and show you show what we got. Okay, well as you can see we have all of the material in between the risers cut down now and trimmed out. And uh, just kind of for aesthetics purposes what you can do next is just simply take your rotary tool and go along at an angle around the inside and the outside as well. And that will give you kind of a nice rounded uh, you know, shape to the, the top and then you know, take a little bit of steel wool and go ahead and just kind of clean up that top a little bit and uh, you'll end up with a really nice uh, polished uh, rim and uh, anyhow uh, that's about it that's the uh, build on the X-Lite stove well there you go guys the X-Lite stove from IntenseOutdoorGear.com I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little how to how it's made video and as we let this uh, water heat up here and the stove burn down I just wanted to take a second to say thank you very much for watching and thank you for your support and we will be seeing you in upcoming videos hopefully. Take very good care and goodbye.